Psalm 24, verse 10. Psalm 24, verse 10. Who is he, this King of glory? Who is he, this King of glory? Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King. The King of glory. The Lord Almighty. He is the King. The King of glory. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Who is he, this King of glory? It's the Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. The Lord Almighty, the King. Prepare for the King. Psalm 24, verse 10. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the King of glory. Imagine this. The King is coming to visit. But your house is a mess. Your clothes are dirty and you have nothing to offer him. How would you feel? What would you do? Some of you might even say, the king would never come to me. I'm just a regular kid. Well, guess what? The most wonderful, amazing king of all kings wants to do just that. He wants to be with you. Jesus is the King of all kings. Last week, we heard from Pastor Shannon how wonderful and awesome Jesus is, that he created the heavens and the earth, that God is all-knowing, that he can be everywhere at any time, and he is all-powerful. So how do we know that this wonderful King is interested in little old us? All throughout the Bible are beautiful scriptures about God's love for us. One of my favorites is Psalm 139, verse 17 to 18. It says, How precious are your thoughts about me, O God! They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. This verse tells me that God loves us so much that we are always on his mind. How many grains of sand do you think there are on the earth? A thousand? A hundred thousand? One million? Hang on a second, I actually have some sand. Let's check this out. All right, so I went to the beach the other day and I brought back a bowl of sand. Can you see? So I thought I might do a challenge for my friend Victoria and see if she can count the grains. Do you think she can? Hey, Victoria! What are you doing? Well, I'm just telling our friends in Jump that the Bible says God is always thinking about us. He sought for us, outnumber the grains of sand on the entire planet. Wow, that seems like a lot. It really is, but I actually have some sand here. Do you reckon you can count the grains? Oh, I can try. One, two, oh, this is really hard. One, You've got two, like seven there. I do. I can't count them one by one. Oh my goodness. I know. There's just too many to count. And this is just one little bowl. Can you imagine how many grains of sand there are in the whole world? God's love for us is limitless. Why don't you say that again with me, Jump? God's love for us is limitless. You know, I think sometimes it's hard to understand God's great love for us, mm. especially when we know how wonderful and amazing he is. Luckily, the Bible is filled with God showing his love to many, many people who didn't deserve it. One of my favorites is the story of Zacchaeus. Why don't we check it out? Let's go. One day, there was a man called Zacchaeus. He was a very greedy man and stole money from lots of people. The people in the town didn't like Zacchaeus because of what he did. 
when Zacchaeus heard Jesus was coming to town, he really wanted to see him. He wasn't very tall, so he climbed up a tree so he could see. When Jesus came, he saw Zacchaeus and called him down. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down. I want to have lunch with you. The people were shocked that Jesus would be interested in spending time with such a bad guy. But Jesus' love is for everyone. Let's find this story in the Bible together. If you have your Bible handy, I want you to turn to Luke 19 verse 1. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your home today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone, gone to be the guest of a sinner. So Zacchaeus was a tax collector mm. and people didn't like the tax collectors to nope. begin with. But worse than that, he stole money from all the people in the town. Now remember, Jesus is omniscient, which means he knows everything. Everyone say, everything. everything. So if he knows everything, then he must know that Zacchaeus isn't a good mm. guy. I know, right? This shows us God's love is unconditional. Why don't you repeat that after me? God's love is unconditional. God knew everything about Zacchaeus, yet still he chose to call him down from that tree and spend time with him. This drove other people nuts. It didn't seem fair and it didn't seem right. But you know, it's the same for us. God in all his majesty and splendor loved us first. He loved us before we could ever love him back. He continues to love us even when we miss the mark, when we lie, when we fight with our siblings, when we think badly about ourselves rather than believing God's truth. We might not be stealing money, but in our own ways, we are all just a bit like Zacchaeus, yet the king still comes to us. Do you know what was cool about Zacchaeus though? It was his hunger to meet with Jesus. Mm. He didn't take it for granted that Jesus was coming to town. He wanted to see him so badly, he climbed a tree just to get a glimpse of him. What about you, Jump? What's your response when you re realize the king is coming? Our response to God's love should be hunger for his presence. That's right. I know sometimes it can be easy to take the presence of God, our relationship with him for granted. But when you stop, and take a second, you realize how wild and amazing it is that he loves us, that his thoughts about us, wait for it, they outnumber the grains of sand, not only in this bowl, but in the whole world. Jesus loved us so much, he actually chose to die for us. Our only response can be to want to get close to him, just like Zacchaeus did. To finish off, I'm going to pray for you that you would remember how beautiful and precious God's love is for you. And then together, we're going to worship. When we worship, I want you to give God your all, your whole heart, your whole attention, because he is so, so deserving. Why don't you close your eyes as I pray? Father God, I thank you that you love, your love for us is so wild. It's so big. It's so amazing. And that even when we don't deserve it, you still want to meet with us. God, I thank you that your thoughts about us outnumber the grains of sand on the whole planet. And I pray that we could have a new revelation of this. We could realize it deep down in our hearts and respond to you with worship. I pray this all in your heavenly name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Why don't we worship together? Oh
God. 